What are the pros and cons of buying a new construction home versus a resale home? There are many differences between these two paths. That's what we're talking about today. Hi, Jessica Janung here with Active Realty and the Janung team. Thanks so much for checking out this video. We're gonna get right to our topic. Um, pros and cons of buying new construction. We're gonna flip back and forth between pros and cons. So we're gonna start with our first pro, which is of course that your house is brand new. It's never been lived in and it should pretty much be perfect. Um, keep in mind these houses, they're built by humans and they are not always perfect. So um, a week before closing, you are gonna get a chance to have them make your house extra perfect. So they are going to do a walkthrough or sometimes it's called a new home orientation. This is like the construction manager and yourself. Your agent will attend if you have decided to bring in a buyer's agent to help you, which I highly recommend. We'll talk about that later. Um, but you guys are going to be walking through the home and you're going to be tagging um, things that are not perfect, things that need to be touched up. So the builder representative, they're going to have a few different colors of tape. They're going to have like one for paint, one for drywall, one for other repairs. And you're going to be tagging things that are not 100% perfect. So things that I common see that need to be tagged that you want touched up before closing are going to be um, uh, paint touch-ups, uh, uneven drywall, um, windows. You're going to want to check all those. Make sure that they're sliding, opening properly. Make sure every window has screens on it. Those are often missed. You're going to want to open all of the cabinet and, and the drawers in the cabinets as well. Make sure everything is aligned correctly because these are the things that often get adjusted when we're doing these walkthroughs. I can make a whole nother video on things to check during your final walkthrough, but that will be for another day. So th those are just a few of the items. So although the house, it's not going to be 100% perfect, um, it, it should be pretty dang close to perfect. So let's switch over and we're gonna talk about a con to buying new construction. So most new construction houses, they are just going to be painted white. Um, if you want the interior of your house painted, um, some builders, not all, you can um, decide to do that at the design center and pay for that in your options upgrades. Um, or you can have a painting contractor come in after you close escrow and paint, but otherwise it's going to be white. Your backyard is going to be all dirt. There is no landscaping that comes comes in the backyard and this is not a builder option. So people, they commonly ask me, you know, you're touring these models and there's this nice built-in barbecue in the backyard. To, um, is that an option? No, none of the builders around here that I work with here in the Temecula Valley offer um, will build you in a built-in barbecue. You're gonna have to do that after the close. None of the builders I'm aware of will um, build a pool for you. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, window coverings are not included. So you're gonna either have to upgrade that at the design center, which not all builders even have that as an option or uh, what most people do is they have an outside contractor come in and add the windows after closing or you know Home Depot do it yourself um, also not included in new construction is a washer dryer and a refrigerator sometimes you can choose these at the design center you used to be able to do this more often than you can now because of the appliance shortage a lot of the builders they're not even allowing you to add the washer dryer and refrigerator you are gonna to have to do that on your own and I recommend you order those early because as you know, there is a big appliance shortage and people are having to wait months for appliances or bring your washer dryer refrigerator from your previous house to your new house and that will solve that problem. Let's talk a little bit more about the landscaping because that is actually one of the more costly things that you are likely gonna to have to do after you close escrow. So. Most of the builders in our area, they are going to give you a little bit of landscaping in your front yard that you can get away with. Um, it's drought tolerant landscaping. It's a few, uh, few shrubs. It's like a tree or two, some bark, and they put in the drip lines so that everything gets watered. It's pretty minimal, but you can get away with it and it will grow in over time. Let's talk about the backyard because as I said, that for the most part is going to be completely dirt in the backyard. So uh, the only exception that I really see to that is um, a lot of times, not always, but they are going to be putting in some kind of drainage. So either um, some drain lines running out to the street or they're going to be grading the dirt away from the house. But we do often see drain lines back there. And sometimes when you have a slope uh, in your backyard, the city will require the builder to landscape that a little bit with like the bark that we were discussing, the drip lines and a few shrubs to help the integrity of the slope. Really the builders only do that when it's required by the city and it has to be a certain amount high for them to make the decision to require that. 
Lastly, regarding the backyard, the H if you're buying in an HOA community, they are, it's in almost all the CCNRs that they are gonna require you to landscape your backyard. They normally give you about six months to a year to um, submit your plans and complete the landscaping of the backyard. I will admit that we show a lot of two and three year old homes that the people never landscape the backyard, but it is going to be in the HOA rules that you are required to do that and there is a time limit. Moving on to the next pro is going to be home efficiency. All new construction homes are now required to come with solar panels. So that happened at the beginning of 2020, California, and that's in California. Um, all new construction homes are required to have solar panels. How you finance them is up to you. You can either lease them or you can purchase them, rolling them into your mortgage. If you choose the lease option, it's about $100, $120 a month typically. Um, all new construction homes, they're going to come with double paned windows. You're going to have your latest up to code water saving plumbing fixtures and the home is going to be well insulated. Obviously you're going to have um, brand new uh, appliances that are supposed to be energy efficient and your HVAC system. So energy efficiency is definitely a pro for new construction. All right, jumping over to my next con, and this is the question that I get most often about new construction, and it is in regards to the property taxes. So uh, the newer the home in our area, which is Southern California, the Temecula Valley, the newer the home, the higher the property taxes. So um, average property taxes, the total rate um, in our area is about 1.7 to 2%. So we do have um, quite a bit of special assessments on new construction, otherwise known as Melarus, uh, very common. So in older homes, so year 2000 or older, you can get close to the base rate of about 1.1% taxes, but new construction is going all the way up to 2% and sometimes even a little bit more. So that's something to be aware of. We have um, a whole video about property taxes where Chris, you know, really dives deep into it if you want to watch that. But um, what happened basically in the early 2000s, um, the cities basically started negotiating more um, um, infrastructure bonds with the builders. So they were able to um, get the builders to agree to attach on these um, special assessments to the new construction property taxes. So um, they're paying for them to, you know, bring in the roads, you know, whatever infrastructure is involved with bringing in a community. The older homes, the cities were not negotiating that very much with the builders. So some in our area, like in Murrieta, your rock bottom special assessments are going to be uh, in like the $200 range for the whole year. So you have your 1.1% base tax rate plus $200 for the whole year. So that's super low. Um, on the flip side, some new construction communities are even going as high as 5,000. So 3,000, 4,000 is the most common and some are as even as high as 5,000 in addition to your base rate for the special assessments. So if you do not want to pay, you know, the close to 2% property taxes, then you definitely want to focus on the older homes, which is typically year 2000 and older. Um, you definitely pay a premium for new construction as far as the property taxes go. So the newer the home, the higher the taxes. Huge tip before we go on. Um, my biggest tip when buying new construction is to make sure that you bring your knowledgeable and experienced agent with you the very first time you visit a new construction community if you want independent representation. If you go by yourself and you check in, oftentimes the builders will not later allow you independent representation. So um, a buyer's agent's um, fee is typically paid for by the builder, so it normally is not costing you anything out of pocket, it's being paid by the builder, which is the seller. So any buyer agent that you bring for independent representation is better than no agent, but I also recommend um, hiring an agent that specializes in new construction, because if they don't specialize in new construction, they're not going to be able to help you out nearly as much as somebody who's working with these builders day in and day out. All right, next pro for buying new construction is that most of the new construction builders in our area, actually all of them that I can think of, have a one year fit and finish warranty. So most things that are gonna go wrong with your house in one year, um, you're gonna be able to put in the warranty request through the builder's system and they are gonna send somebody out to finish it, um, to fix it for you. So, um, you know, most defects that you have. Uh, like if you buy a resale home and your shower 
shower leaks through the roof of your ceiling, that's gonna go to your homeowner's insurance. But if you're buying a new construction home, um, the builder is most likely going to come in and take care of that. Um, in addition to your one year fit and finish warranty, which is kind of, there's a few exceptions, but it's pretty much a bumper to bumper warranty. Um, the state of California, and I can never remember what the bill is called, we'll put it up here, SB something or another, um, is going to give you a 10 year structural warranty. So, um, you know, if anything is wrong with the structure and the foundation of your house, anything major, there's um, certain allowances, but anything major, um, you are gonna be covered by this California plan. So the warranty is a great thing to have. You might be thinking, oh, it's a new house, you're not gonna need the warranty, but a lot of my clients um, do need the warranty because like I said, these houses are built by humans, um, things are still certainly breaking, so it's great to have that one year fit and finish warranty in place. Ideally, anything major that is wrong with the house is going to be found in your home inspection that you do independently before you close escrow. I have a video where I talk about that and my recommendation for getting an independent home inspection is becoming even stronger nowadays because quite frankly, with the, the labor and the supply shortages, especially at the end of the year with all these builders trying to get closings into month end, um, we had a lot of issues with um, things being broken and not operating properly more so than normal so with brand new homes so my recommendation to get that independent inspection is getting stronger even though you have that one year warranty it's much better to find that issue before you move into the home and before you move into the home and when the builder is trying to close your home they get things uh, fixed very quickly once you go through the warranty process um, my from what I hear from my clients it uh, oftentimes is not very quick on the warranty process you know normally they get to you but it is certainly not as quick as when they're trying to close the home in a few days. Next con of buying new construction is that the neighborhood is not established. It's a brand new neighborhood. It's gonna take a while for the landscaping to grow in, for the trees to grow in. Um, you might be living next to construction for a while. You might have um, construction vehicles driving through your neighborhood for a couple years while it takes them to build out some of these neighborhoods. Um, so that's something to think about. If you want mature landscaping, um, the new construction is gonna take a while to get there. Um, another thing about an established neighborhood is that, you know, when you're buying new construction, you do not know your neighbors until you move in. But with an established neighborhood, you can talk with your neighbors, you can, you know, see how things look after dark, um, see how you feel about it. With new construction, it is a little bit of a mystery on how that community is gonna age if the neighbors are going to have high pride of ownership and take care of their homes. You know, with a 20 or 30 year old community, you can have a better sense of how that community is gonna do because what, what you see is what you get. New construction, you just have to see how it plays out over time. The next pro for buying a new construction home is no bidding wars. Uh, there, there's a little bit of an exception to that, but for the most part, the price is the price. You get on the list when it's your turn, you get the home for you know however much the builder has it listed for. Um, the one exception to that is Pulte Homes in our area. They have a couple communities where they are still doing the bidding process. I will say that the bids are not going near as crazy as they were, which, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 70,000 over is what they were going. Now I've been hearing they're going about 2,000 to like 25,000 at the, at the most is what I'm hearing them going over currently, but that could always change. Once you enter into the resale market, it is not uncommon to see bidding wars. We are up against multiple offers on most properties that our clients are offering on in resale land. So I will say that that is probably the number one reason that my clients are buying new construction is to avoid the bidding wars. They just wanna avoid the drama of it. And so new construction is particularly enticing um, because the price is the price. Next con for buying new construction um, can be that the locations can be a little bit far out. They can be a little bit far out from the freeway, a little bit far out from amenities. Uh, in our area, most of the new construction, like in Winchester and Temecula is moving east. So that makes it a little bit more difficult for commuters. For my clients who work from home, it's no problem. Um, same thing with Menifee is like, they seem to be moving east and west kind of away from the freeways. So um, a lot of these developments, um, 
you know, the, the good land gets sold early. So these areas buy all the amenities and the freeways, they're already developed. And so these builders are looking for open land and they're having to get further and further out from things. A quick new construction pro that a lot of people actually don't know a lot of my clients are pleasantly surprised to find out that their homeowners insurance for new construction is surprisingly lower than resale i would say typically it's about half like 750 dollars a year to 850 dollars a year for your yearly homeowners insurance premium is very common for new construction normally it's double that for resale 1500 2000 i think the insurance companies they give you a break because it's brand new and less things are um, likely to go wrong, I guess. Where do you stand on new construction versus resales? It seems like people, they're either firmly planted in one camp or another. So um, are you interested in new construction? Do you only buy resale homes? Uh, about half of our business is new construction. I sold about 40 new construction houses last year. Um, but for me personally, I've only ever bought a resale for myself. I've never bought a new construction home personally. Who knows, maybe it will happen someday, but let me know what you think down below in the comments. Okay, bye.